the uh, let's see. So um, I'm I'm see so many good questions here, and I know that we don't have so much time, but um, there's there's one uh, that I that I lost here. In oh, let's stir up some controversy. Ciara Tyrell asks, "What are your thoughts on the rising trend of live action remakes of animated films?" Because I know that there is a project in uh, in the works for a Lilo and Stitch remake. So this is directly going to relate to things that you had a hand in, not only your general thoughts, but you know something that you you know uh, that you worked on. Yeah. Uh, so my my feeling is that I'm I'm not really interested in them. I haven't seen many of them. Uh, they're made by capable filmmakers, and and I don't want to disparage any of the talent or the hard work that went into them. I just think that it's lazy on the part of the studio. I think it's easy to go back at, to something that was successful, that uh, a really talented team put a lot of years and hard work into, and then redo it uh, without without changing what worked. That to me is a missed opportunity for putting something original into the world that people um, years from now are gonna cite as such a pivotal movie to them and, and one that really meant a lot. So there, there are a lot of misfires uh, in, in filmmaking and not every film can be a, a, an indelible classic, but it seems like a missed opportunity to take a budget like that uh, that's required to do a live action remake of an animated movie and then and, and pour it all into it. I would rather see something original, especially from a studio that that has been such a pioneer for originality and for indelible classics. Like they should be building upon, they should be building that hopper uh, with more classics for future generations. And, and yeah, so that that for me is like the that bugs me is just knowing how how well to do the studio is. Um, how capable they are of taking risks and then watching them not take the risks. And uh, I think when you talk about Lilo and Stitch, <laughs> it's <yeah>. Lilo and Stitch <laughs> is such a quirky, such a singular voice. Um, it, it's it's Chris's sensibility brought to life in this in this story that was very personal to him. It started as a children's book uh, that he had an idea for. And and my my part of Lilo and Stitch was really helping bring that 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 voice and that style um, to life. You know, I wasn't, uh, I, was, I was partnering with Chris as being an amplifier of his voice. And it, it, it's so specific that the idea of another team coming in to remake it um, as a live action movie and without Chris involved is kind of crazy, without any of it involved. <laughs> Um, because it's so unique. It's not a, it's not a time tested classic. It's not a fairy tale, nor is it like, you know, a, a, a staple of folklore. It's, it's, it's as individual as it could be. But I also know that stitch is, is, um, is ubiquitous in Disney merchandising and, uh, he makes a lot of money and he's constantly, I mean, He's got to be up there in, in the top five best-selling characters in, in plush and toys and merchandise and consumer products. So I can I can see why they want to go back into it. I just don't I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 